The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 13th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what these bulls and bears, what these buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course. If you're in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, get all the USNCs trading to the downside. The leader, percentage-wise, is the semis. They're off one and seven tenths percent, followed by the Russell down one and six six one point six six percent. So it's sixty-seven and thirty-six points to the downside. The Dow is off three seventeen. The S and P thirty. Nasdaq one hundred one fifty-four. Spot volatility index is uh, up a buck seventy-one. It is trading above its fifty-day exponential moving average. We've been going up and down, up and down, above and below over the last four trading sessions. So we're not going to apply a significant meaning to it as we speak. Gold's up about four bucks, trading out at 1788, 1789. Silver's trading at 2232. That's 12 pennies to the upside. Lights we crude is flat at 7171. Natural gas is up a penny. It's traded right up into resistance. The 30-year treasury is indicating it wants to trade higher. It's up by one uh, point, one full point, two ticks. 162.12 is what it's trading at. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, you've got Arena Pharmaceutical. 39 bucks. Bionitech up 24. That's 79% and 9% respectively. Equinix is up 21, about 3%. Moderna up 17, about 7%. Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals about 6% as well. That's about 11 bucks. So the downside, it is booking holdings off 90 bucks, 4%. Shopify down 62. Tesla off 54. That's 5%. Amazon 42, a little over 1%. Align Technologies is out of line. It's down 37 bucks or 5.5%. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at out there. Let's just go to our first question, maybe on the minds of many. And that question is coming in from Rick. Rick K. Rick writes in and he says, Hey, Steve, can you please provide your opinion on Apple? The stock had a tremendous move up. Do you think the stock can go higher by the end of the year? Well, of course it can. Let's. Uh, but what Apple's doing today is forming bar, the bar following bar number nine. So I think we took a look at this when I was last with you on Thursday of last week out there. And and so let me just pull over the other the white background charts first. So we've got here on the on the black background chart, you can see the the completion of the one to one A to B equals C D T upside. Uh, it's a strong move off that C to D leg. So it's really suggesting it wants higher price. But there may be a short-term pause out here. So let's go take a look at that potential short-term pause. And that would be created by that uh, TD9 count pattern. So Friday was bar number nine of the TD9 count. Uh, TD9 count top, Rick, can take place on bars eight, nine, has to take place on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Right now we're in the bar following nine. Now the cool thing about this is you can really answer your own question based upon this pattern. If Apple, so so let's just say that today's high holds, today's high is 182.13. I think that would it need to get to 182.17 to get to uh, 
three trillion or something like that. I think it was in that range. So, uh, but that doesn't really matter. But my, the point that I really wanted to make to you, Rick, is that whatever today's high is, and right now it's one eighty two thirteen. If we see price close above that tomorrow or the next day, that's going to tell us about a continued strong momentum move to the upside. And if you ask me, then where will price head to? We would just use that A to B equals CD pattern on the weekly chart out here and suggest the next stop would be in the 190.49 level. Now, where is it that Apple may pull back to? Well, the first logical spot for price to pull back, if this TD9 top takes hold, is going to be 172.26. Now, it's going to be about that area. Right now, on my screen, that's what it's printing at, it being that oscillator and change line. If you'd like to learn how to use the oscillator and change line, how to create the oscillator and change line, just subscribe to Mastery Probability. Do it for 29 days or less. It won't cost you anything, and uh, you'll learn some uh, pretty cool tools out there. So 172.26, and the reason why that is certainly the first target area is because the current daily profiles are well below that if price were to close below the oscillator and change line that would suggest a further retracement we don't have that in play as we speak if we look at the weekly time frame chart we mentioned that it is completing the one-to-one -one price projection on a weekly basis this is also going to be bar number nine of a td9 count so on a short-term basis you've got a potential topping signal on a weekly basis you have a potential topping signal out here on a monthly time frame chart You've got wave number seven, that's letter G, bar number seven, roads momentum indicator signal. I don't really see anything of significance out here to be concerned with just yet, but the daily and weekly suggest that Apple should pull back. Now, if I look at just the short-term time frame, looking for some type of topping patterns out here, we like to see those when we see something on a daily basis. Uh, other than A to B equals CD patterns, I'm just flipping through the different time frames that we have. Well, this is the 130-minute chart where I do have a roads momentum indicator signal. So what this would tell us, Rick, is that price is going to need to close below 176.75 to suggest that we see lower price. And that first lower price area would be 173.10 to 174.56. Let me look at that 195-minute chart out here. Um, yeah, well, actually, let me see. Where was this close? So this is the bar falling bar number 9, 179.50. The high, I'm sorry, it's really the high, 179.63. Where was this close? Once, oh, so you've got a TD9 count top that's in place for the 195-minute uh, chart. So your question specifically was, do you think the stock can go higher by the end of the year? I do, but it's December 13th. You've got a TD9 count topping pattern in place for Apple out here. And if it's going to go higher, price is going to have to close above today's high. And that would be your signal. So you don't have to worry about my charts or my opinion. You could just go ahead and pay attention to the uh, chart patterns out there. Now, if Apple has a higher high today than what we've already seen, then you'd go ahead and factor that into the equation. That's what you would be using. So uh, does that have the opportunity to move higher by at the end of the year? Yes. It does, but right now I think what you should be taking a look at is that TD nine count top. So, Rick, thanks much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. And, folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. No other requests as we speak. None inside the Tiger's Den. None by email. And there's nobody on the lines out there. So with that being the case, let's just go take a tour around the markets, get a feel for what they're doing. Let's start with the equity future contracts out here. You've got the ES. Uh, so we're rolling over into the uh, March 2022. Steve, has got a synthetic version of the uh, symbols up here and uh, the profiles that uh, go with that. Now, what's really interesting here about the Russell 2000, right now price is pulling back to the bottom of a brand new weekly profile that fo has formed above the prior profile. And when I say this is a gargantuan one, right now support is at the bottom. When we come back for this break, I'll tell you where the top is. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So from a profile standpoint, the newest thing that has formed since we were last together is the one that is uh, began forming last night in the Russell 2000. That's for the weekly time frame. So the bottom, and this is this is a gigantic uh, profile. 2169 is the bottom of the weekly. That's been tested so far today. Doesn't guarantee that it's going to hold. The center is up at 2266. Now, the top of the daily profile is at 2282 out there. So that's quite the range. Now, price is able to close above 2282. This is a bullish structured weekly profile that's forming. That would then signal to us that the Russell 2000 wants to make its way all the way back to its all time high in the 2460 level. So you'd really want to see some kind of nice bottoming signal on the daily time frame. Oh, we already have that, I believe, on the daily time frame. And that's below where price. So it's got a TD9 count on the daily. We'll go take a look at that. And price is holding the support of the weekly. Sure makes you say, hmm, something to think about. We take a look at the Dow. That's the uh, second panel from the right. We can see that price right now is testing the bottom of its daily profile. Now, I take that back. It's testing the center of its bearish structured daily profile that center level is at 35505 now that's a really important level the low so far today has been 35505 so 35505 and isn't that amazing how does price stop right there how do, this profile formed way back on the trading session of december the second out there how does price stop right? well it's because these profiles are very valuable to you and i so if price were to close below the center of a bearish structured profile it increases the odds substantially that price will make its way down to the bottom of the profile, and that'd be at 34,322. If that's going to happen, I doubt that the Russell 2000 will hold 2169. By the way, 2157 is the bottom of its daily profile out there. But right now, price is testing a level of support, clearly level support, inside of the Dow. 
Uh, the in NQ and the ES have been doing the same thing for the last four trading sessions, which is basically just moving sideways and consolidating with inside their bearish structured area of their daily profiles. And the ES mini is between 46.49 and 47.17. And the NQ is between 16.088 and 16,456. So just a sideways-ish type market out there. Now, what that does is it sets up a consolidation, so to speak, or a measured move. So, if price, so take, for example, here, let's just take a look at the ES. And I'll just uh, go ahead and draw the potential consolidation pattern around it. It's just this little rectangle out there. And so that looks to be about right. And what that does, that's that little yellow square. I should probably just change that to white because uh, I've already got yellow profile yellow profiles out there so give me a moment to do that might make it easier for you to see on your uh, screen uh, as you're watching us especially so there we so we've got the little white box out there now what a profile what a horse stevie what are you talking about the cool thing about a consolidation is that when price busts through it it gives us a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation so in the case of the es mini if we were to break to the upside first we know there's resistance at 4740 but likely because it's a small consolidation Price would more likely make its move up to about the 47.69. Likewise, if price busted to the downside, then the first target becomes about 4,600 or so, and that is the that is the measured move that is the equal to the little consolidation that we've seen over the last four trading sessions. You can do the same thing inside the NQ out there. We don't really have the exact same pattern inside the Dow or the Russell 2000. So those consolidations are really inside those two instruments out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to what the general markets are doing. We do have another question that has come in. So let's get to that and then we can uh, uh, search, you know, surf back around and take a look at what else is going on, generally speaking, with regard regard to the equity markets. This question here is coming in from uh, Greg M. Greg writes in, he says, hey, Steve, uh, would you uh, take a look at the IBB? I'm not in, but I've been watching it for a bottoming signal. What do you think? So let's go take a look at the IBB. Let's look at our three panel chart to begin with, our daily, our weekly, and our monthly. And we take a look at that IBM, IBB. We take a look at the IBB. The first thing we'll notice is price is trading below the bottom, Greg, of its daily profile. It closed below that on Friday. So far, that's acted as resistance today, it being 149.32. So it's a suggestion right now until we see if there's an actual bottom signal that took place four, five, six, seven trading session. Go back on December the 6th out there. Uh, this would suggest that price is going to go target that December 6th uh, candle which is anywhere between the 143.25 to 147.20 level out there. The actual low today has been 147.25. We're below the bottom of the weekly. Support is really the bottom of its monthly chart, which is 145.96. So let's pull over the other IBB charts. Greg's specific question is, do we see some type of bottom pattern? So as we open this up, the answer would be, well, let's just see if this did complete. I don't think it did, but just because I say I don't think it did, my eyes could be lying to me. And I don't like those lying eyes. So let's go look at the A to B equals CD pattern. Because if this did complete, then we do have the bullish reversal candle. The A point would be out here, it looks like on September the 2nd. The B point would be the low on October 6th. The C point is a retracement up into November 3rd. Well, pretty close. Greg, I mean, the bottom, the low so far out here was on December the 6th, and that low was down at the 145, 143.25 level. And 142.19 was the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. So let's just say there's a potential that the IBB for its daily time frame has completed that by the D point. It did it when it generated that bullish reversal candle, a little rising window or gap to the upside on December the 7th. Okay, so now what do we have? We have prices back below it's red oscillator and change line. That red oscillator and change line, oh, let me move this down here. I don't know why that happened, but that. now let's see if I can figure this out. So the red oscillator and change line value, 148.82. So you're looking for a bottom. One way to potentially play this is to close above that area, above the oscillator and change line. And right now it's trading at 148.71. So yeah, I'd wait for the 148.82 and a close above that. So that's got potential. Uh, now, where would price head to? Well, remember we said that price is below the bottom of that uh, daily profile, 149.32. I would say, Rick or Greg, that you, you really need to see a close above that because that's your resistance level. So you got a valid bottom. 
price makes a move, I don't have a reason, at least on the daily time frame, for why it pulled back from the high from uh, four trading sessions ago. But that doesn't really matter. It is. It's below the red oscillator and change line. Always dangerous. Below the bottom of the daily profile, I think this needs, even though it's got that bottom pattern, it needs to prove itself to you. Now, another potential proof could be, Greg, could be, that price uh, comes back and it retests that uh, swing point. That's a swing point from the trading day of December 6th. It had 3.9 million shares. Now, on Friday, price pulled back with 2.4. Today, the volume is 1.9. So certainly lighter volume out here. You did get a test and rejection of that swing point on Friday. Very close to it today, but you got the light volume out there, but really resistant. So it's almost kind of like a neutral um, signal out here. And neutral, you're really waiting for additional information. So has it formed a bottom? It has. Uh, but you don't like right now that resistance is holding. And uh, that always says that price could move low. If I look at a weekly chart for you, let's see what kind of signals we have out here. On the weekly basis, you know, this would also support uh, being patient because price closed below for the last two weeks. It's TD9 breakout level of 149.15. And we don't have any kind of a bottom signal here. What we do on the daily, we do not on the weekly. However, the weekly chart does have a oscillator and change line that changed colors last week. So typically we see price and that level catch up to each other. And that's at the 156.75 area, Greg. So here's the way to take a look at this. I would wait for this to prove itself to you. And if price can close above 149.32, the IBB should at least make a move to the 156 and change area out there. And above that, you're back off to the races. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for writing in. And uh, we'll be back in just a few moments, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got a couple of requests. Let's get to uh, them. The uh, first one coming in from Susanna. And uh, Susanna from Canada, she wants to take a look at two symbols out here. The first one is uh, Ballard Power Systems. The ticker symbol is BLDP. And she also wants to take a look at the Bitcoin. Uh, do I add or get out? I am long BLDP debating. Do I get a, uh, Do I add or get out? Okay. So here we just take a look at uh, Ballard Power Systems. And as it relates to its daily, weekly, and monthly profiles, not good news out here, Susan. Price is trading below all of them. Now, price is trading back into a recent swing point. Uh, well, there are really a couple of recent swing points. So there's the one from October 6th, had volume of 3 million shares. That was tested and rejected with 4.6 million shares on December 6th. Typically, when you test a swing point with volume, you go back and you retest it. Well, that retest is taking place as we speak on Friday and today. Friday, the move down was with 3.7 million. You're at uh, 2.8. 2.0 million right now so maybe that's about another 3 million i think at a minimum so do you so the low from today is 1278 the low of that swing point from october 6th is 1278 boy so you've you've tagged it do you let's go see if there's any kind of a bottom out there on the daily time frame to assist with you so to assist you to assist with you now you've already held it this long i would at least wait until so i would at least wait for price to uh, let me get back to the daily chart here um ah, interesting I, I wait for price to at least close below that swing point from october 6 before i get rid of it now what we have out here is price is now also moving lower doing less relative energy doesn't really help you because it's not a confirmed buy pattern until we get some type of bullish reversal candle. So the earliest, well, that could happen. To, nah, I don't see that happening. Well, it could happen today. Uh, this thing would really have to take off, but not likely. So I would wait. So since you have, would I add to it? I would add to it if you got a confirmed bottoming signal on this run out here. We don't have that, so I wouldn't add to it for sure. Um, would I jettison this? I wouldn't unless I saw price close below the low from October 6th. That was tested today. So that's, I believe that's the 1278 area. Let me look at the weekly chart. Any kind of bottoming signals out here? And the answer is no, other than just testing the swing point, which was a hammer candle for May 14th. So there's another area to watch. That low is, what, is 12, 1280? Yeah, 1280. What do I have on that first chart? Okay, uh, make sure I... What was that low? Uh, 1278. Okay. So it's but close below that 1278. That would say, yeah, maybe you've held it too long. Um, and I don't have much for you on the uh, monthly time frame. So in summary, price is pulling back. Similar type volume into that October 6th swing point. A rose momentum indicator signal has been triggered. I wouldn't close it out again unless price closed below that October 6th low out there. And then if you got a bullish reversal, if it doesn't do that, you get a bullish reversal candle to confirm your rose momentum indicator signal. Then that at least says hold if you want to add to it. You know, okay. Resistance at 1399, above that 1470, and then above that 1767. Uh, so Susanna from Canada. I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a magical, marvelous Monday out there. Let's. Oh, you also want to take a look at Bitcoin. So let's pull over the uh, Bitcoin chart. Uh, what did you want? You wanted uh, BL, BCLI. BC. Uh, shoot, I don't want to start that right now. That'll screw me up. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. Here's the December contract for Bitcoin. Now, don't I think you're just asking me to take a look at it. What we don't have out here on Bitcoin is any kind of a bottoming signal. The oscillator and change line changed colors back on December 3rd. At some point in time, we'll see price in that level catch up to each other. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern that's in play out here. If we go try to take a look at where that might take price to, let me get back to my Bitcoin futures charts. Give me a moment. We're looking at the December contract. Oops, sorry about that, folks. I think that's somebody calling about tickets for Pat Metheny, but we'll just simply have to call them back. Uh, let's... Uh, where is uh, Bitcoin out here? Do, 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 do. Come on, Steve. Where is it? Where is it? Bitcoin. There we go. So let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD down pattern that is in play out here. So the A point in Bitcoin is all the way up here at the high from the trading day of November the 10th. Our B point is going to be the low from November 26th 
which is also happens to be the C point. So the B and C are going to be the same swing point. So the one to one would get us down to the 43.680 level. We're at 47.410 right now. So with regard to Bitcoin, that could be a Gartley buy pattern. It could be a buy the D point pattern. It would need a bullish reversal candle as price makes its way down there. Today is going to become bar number seven of a TD9 count. So it is possible that between tomorrow and Thursday, there could be a TD9 count bottom that would form. So more to follow. Uh, Susanna, why don't we uh, maybe right back to me tomorrow or on Wednesday and we can take a look at it and see if that pattern has come to fruition. But this stage here, the daily chart is suggesting lower price out there. The weekly is suggesting the same. So in the case of Bitcoin, uh, just anticipate right now that we should see some lower price. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming from Michael P. And Michael wants to take a look at Tesla. So I want to get something else started on my white background charts. And let's get back to my three time frame charts out here just to make this efficient if we can. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we? Our three time frame charts. Come on, Stevie. Oh, right here. So let's go take a look at Tesla and then let's read Michael's question. Michael's question goes like this What do you think of Tesla filling the uh, 890 gap? Any ramifications on the Q and uh, SPY? With regard to Tesla, oh, let's actually type in the actual ticker symbol, TSLA. And uh, first, let's take a look at Tesla and see what it's signaling to you and I, Mike. The first thing we know that price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, trading into a breakout level. That's from the trading day of October 25th, 63 million shares. You're pulling back with 17 million shares. So it's pulling back into a supporter, potential supporter with light volume, but below profiles. If we take a look at the weekly profile, uh, resistance is, uh, well, price is above resistance. So old resistance perhaps is due support. That would be the top of that weekly profile, or 876. So 876 becomes a target or a potential target. Let's look at the white background charts out here. And when we take a look at Tesla, what do we know? What we know is that price may be targeting that 855.50 level. So I gave you the breakout of that gap to the upside, wide price spread. There was accelerating volume there. The actual real breakout is at 855.50. So that may be the area for you to take a look at, um, Michael, uh, as one possibility. What other things do I see out here chart-wise? Pattern-wise, not much. Um, I see a potential consolidation. And that consolidation would look like this. Let's go back to the black background chart. It's easier to see that. Uh, and that depends on whether or not this gap. So you're asking, you know, will, will price... Go back and fill that gap out there. Well, if it's going to fill that gap, we can go take a look at Tesla and say, well, Michael, why, why not ask about the gap that formed on October 15th? That's an open gap that is still out there. Now, maybe you did. You said 890. Let me see. Maybe you were asking me about that gap. That high was uh, 843. So, no, you're asking me about this gap right here, which is the 890. That's the high from October uh, 22nd. So you're pulling back with light volume. It can. The consolidation pattern, at least at this moment, looks pretty much like this i would say you know we're, we're back towards the bottom of that consolidation so can it fill it i don't have anything on my charts here mike to suggest that it can't right no bottoming signal on the daily time frame the only thing we have is price pulling back with much lighter volume into a breakout area steve Rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Let's go out to New Buffalo, Michigan, and speak with Gary. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Yeah, hey, it's my dear friend and uh, fellow Michigander. Did you have a good long weekend? I did, as a matter of fact. Uh, last night, uh, we were up uh, seeing family up in the Orlando area for the uh, weekend, uh, played some nice golf. On the way back yesterday, we stopped in Stewart at really what has become my favorite movie uh, uh, concert theater. It's called the Lyric Theater. It was built in the 19, I think, 1927, 1917, somewhere right around there. Uh, they did do a little bit of refurbishment. But what I love about it, Gary, I, I love music, is the sound. It's the most amazing theater. We, we, we got, like, the last two seats for this, um, uh, who was playing last night, uh, uh, Peter White and Mindy Abair. So it was a jazz oh, Christmas wow. type concert. Yeah. Really, really good. We got, we were stuck truly in the corner, the very back corner, up against you know, kind of like what looked like cement type walls. The sound was amazing. If we closed our eyes, you would have no idea that you weren't sitting right dead smack in the center. It's just a, so. Yes, I had a great weekend. How about yourself? Okay, well, a busy one. But um, is that in? You said Stewart. Is that near yeah, where? Stewart. Uh, Frances Langford had her um, a boat and restaurant. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Stewart, Florida. In fact, and uh, Pat Metheny is is going to be playing there in uh, February. Cool. So, uh, so I'm going to so I'm trying to get tickets uh, for that. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to cool. be able to see them there if I've got to go to Miami. But in any event, out here, we'll talk. We'll talk yeah. Um, yeah, more on that. I love to catch up. On so that. I know you want to talk about a couple question. of different this things. Is macro. Um, so um, you know, and I'm a longer term guy, and I get a little bit like grew up with uh, some of the timing, but um, I'm long the TMF and the um, TLT, and I have been for three months, okay? Okay. Um, I've got some stuff coming due throughout all of next year um, on that, but on the same token, when I'm, uh, I'm expecting from all the macro people I'm following, um, you know, some of them, I sent an email and stuff, a couple of them, uh, yes. but the, the reality is, is that, um, that the dollar is going to get stronger, which causes problems for the emerging markets and some other things. Uh, but also, if the interest rates keep falling, which I expect them to do, obviously, um, not that it's obvious that they will, but it's obvious I believe they will. Um, but the uh, other part of that is, is how does that affect gold? Whew, that's that's quite a question. So I know uh, there may be a, a more in depth question someday when you're slow and you got you know you're looking for something to do. I you didn't have any call in, so I thought I'd 
go. No, 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 no. That's a, that's okay. It's, it's okay. Just trying to stitch together everything. So let's just first start with T bonds and what they're doing or what they're not doing, maybe why they're doing it. So you are along the TLT. And as we take right. a look at what I have up on my screen right now for everybody that's watching us on Tiger T, we've got the daily in the upper left, the weekly in the upper right, the monthly in the lower left, the quarterly in the uh, lower right. So we're just first just take a look at profiles. What you like right now is prices trading above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. That level is 163.14. So a close above that today is going to suggest that price should go back and uh, tag its recent highs. That's the high from just a few days ago back on December the 3rd. And that's up in the 165.27 level. So the daily is bullish. The weekly, right now, price is a brand new weekly profile that is forming. Price is trading above the top of it. That's at 163.13. So that's another indication that 30-year uh, treasury should move higher. If we look at the monthly chart, we can see that price is already above the top of its monthly profile. So from a profile standpoint, the next level of resistance for you is at 169.15. That is the center of its quarterly bearish structured profile. Any questions about that information so far that I've provided to you? Nope, it's excellent, Tom. Thank you. Okay, so now let's look at just simply the white background chart, see what they are communicating to us. We can see that right now we're in the March 2022 contract out here. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. That suggests it wants higher price. So that just confirms what we looked at from the profile area. And uh, because we just rolled over to March 22, there's not a lot that I can share with you about the weekly chart other than we know that a TD9 breakdown level occurred at 164.09. And three weeks ago, that is exactly where price ran in resistance. So 164.09 is going to be a key area of resistance for you on a move higher. A close above that would be a positive. But it does look like the 30-year Treasury wants higher price. Now, what does that mean? Is that lower interest rates? Could be. Is it just demand to be able to get into U.S. dollars? And that's the thing that we have to really take into account. What do you mean we have to take that into account, Steve-O? All we really have to do is go back and just take a look. If you are in Europe right now, if you are a holder of euros, what we can see here is that uh, you've had uh, currency deflation ever since June of 2008. This is the top portion of this chart is the uh, euro and you can see that it's been in a decline ever since then and so people are maybe saying no maybe this euro isn't uh, going to be here forever and if you were uh, trying to get into u.s dollars buying a 30-year treasury bond would certainly be one way to do that so what are those interactions uh you know do i can i can we can we definitively make that statement out there yeah, I'm definitively making that statement. <laughs> so, you know, so interest rates could just simply be because of demand for the uh, for the 30 year Treasury. People just want to get U.S. dollars. So that that's or they, but, need, but, or they need it to repay debt. Well, dollars. absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if, if the interest rates do go up, as you pointed out, that's going to really hurt emerging markets. And there's because it's going to cost them more. Uh, you know, if the U so if the U.S. dollar is going up in their currency or their local currency, it costs them more because of all the bonds that are denominated in U.S. dollars out there. So I'm going to kind of keep my thought process with regard to the 30-year Treasury, just simply based upon the 30-year Treasury and its patterns versus some type of interaction that it might have with regard to U.S. equity markets or or even metals markets out there. Does that so? I mean, that, that's that's my okay. that's my opinion. That's my take out there. Uh, and you can just measure that against, you know, other people's opinions as well. So that's why so, for the 30-year Treasury, I could I wouldn't be talking you out of getting out of your long position because everything we just looked at suggests that it wants to move to higher ground. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Someday I'd like to explore that next step because I'm actually um, uh, have puts on on uh, certain uh, things with the financials and things like that with a declining interest rate, you know. Um, effect on them so but we can talk about that another time i know we're getting to the end of the show so thank well, you so well, much we know we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're okay we got another minute here so with regard to gold you know and the strength of the u.s dollar so we've had gold going up and we've had the u.s dollar index also moving higher so u.s dollar index moving higher t-bonds moving higher 
another indication to you and I that the demand for dollars is there. Why? Yeah, I think that people are getting a bit nervous over in Europe with regard to everything that is going on over there, maybe elsewhere around the world. And so people are saying, you know, maybe uh, there's just crazy everywhere, but at least it's a little bit less crazy in the uh, in the U.S. So the, the key here with regard to metals is going to be as currencies move up and down, will the metal continue to move higher in all major currencies? Right now, today, you're higher in terms of pounds, you're higher in terms of yen, you're uh, just about break even in terms of euros and slightly higher in terms of uh, U.S. dollars. So I think it's better to take a look at gold in terms of those primary currencies to help us understand what a global capital is communicating to us. And right now, the real key level for gold is going to be a close above the center of its weekly profile. That's been the real resistance level, Gary, and that's at 1788.20. Perfect. That's great. And I, I thought the other point, part two, for the some of the miners, I know you you had mentioned the other day you're along the uh, new mine. Yes. Um, and and uh, for some of these international mon miners, there's actually benefit to the dollar going up, as I understand yep. it. Um, Absolutely. They're you know selling off their product in dollars. So. Sure. Um, That'll be interesting to see how that plays out with the rising. Well, dollar. Gary, we're going to a, we're going to a hard break here. You can hang on. If not, we're going to, we'll, we'll close out the show. But uh, I've got to say goodbye right this second. Sharpening we'll be right back, folks. As an investor, is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got a couple of requests. We'll see if we can get to them before the end of the show. The first one from uh, Tiger's Den, from Dana Tiger's Den. Brainstorm Cell Therapeutics, BCLI, 
is uh, what we're taking a look at. A uh, huge move today, uh, 4.9 million shares. It did 99,000 shares, for example, on Friday. But here's what we know. Price is above the top of its daily profile, so 388. It closed above that. Would then suggest a run to 439. That's the top of the weekly profile. And if it's going to make its way to 439, then 490 becomes the next target area, the center of its week, a monthly profile. And above 490, you're looking at 688. So just taking this step into progressions, the first thing you want to see is a close above 388. Then a close above 4. 439 then it closed about 490 and then you're on a, on a move up to the 460 for uh, sorry 688 level as I open this real quickly and take a look at the daily time frame I don't see any kind of a topping signal it's a positive if price close above 386 that is a TD9 breakdown level so Dan this looks uh, fairly good and uh, best of luck to you on that trade there was a question side uh, that came in by email Johnny want to take a look at Verizon so in Verizon you have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom that was put in place uh, that was confirmed on December 2nd you have another key reversal bar today that's confirming a second Verizon bottom prices above the bottom of its daily profile at 49.99 what you really want to see is a close above its oscillator and change line that's currently printed at 50.31 but if you're asking does Verizon have a bottom it most certainly does and if you can close above that oscillator and change line you should make its way to 51 22 or 52 20 the last request is to take a look at SoFi out here I've got the white background charts in this just the daily time frame I uh, sit tight on SoFi. Uh, who wanted that? I don't recall. It doesn't matter. Uh, the reason why I want you to sit tight is because you've triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, not you, but the chart pattern. And when you do get a bullish reversal candle out there, that would confirm a bottom pattern and then move up to its oscillator and change on the 1634, the top of its daily profile at 1701. But if you're asking, does SoFi have a bottom? Not just yet. So be patient on that one. Folks, stay tuned. David White is up next with the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home from 3 to 4. And I'll be back with you tomorrow on terrific Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining us, folks. Be safe out there and look forward to seeing you again soon.